Because of the recent healthcare crisis and stock market crash, experts are wondering, could this be worse than the Great Depression? And the reports are showing that up to 30 million Americans could be unemployed by this time next month. Now, in order to understand this, we need to take a little walk through history. Now, in order to understand what happened back in the Great Depression, we need to understand a few key things. Number one, the rate of income inequality in the 1920s was off the charts. The top 1% of that time had over 25% of total new income and wealth gain. And when the stock market crashed in 1929, most of the super wealthy had already taken their money out and the rest of us were left to fend for crumbs. The second big thing that happened during the depression of 1929 is massive bank failures. There was also a massive decrease in purchasing. There was also massive unemployment due to these company and stock market bubbles. And lastly, we have a massive drought across the United States and of course the famous Dust Bowls. And due to the massive wealth and income inequality, the money was concentrated at the top and the rest that was going around for the ordinary people dwindled and dwindled as time went on. Now luckily, thanks to President FDR, who implemented a lot of things to help and grow the now middle class, we had lots of programs that were made to protect the little guy, you and me. FDR's policies were simple. It was to take the average worker and put him to work. Since unemployment was over 24%, he said, let's start a new deal and let's create America's infrastructure. He invested in building dams, highways, large buildings, and many other things that we still rely on today, including social security. So if you get a social security check, you can thank FDR for that. Also the FHA or Federal Housing Authority that makes sure there's fairness and truth in lending so that everyone has an equal opportunity to own a home. He also created the FDIC that guarantees your deposits at a bank. Before this, your deposits were just as good as the bank's word. Now it's actually backed by the government, so if things go crazy, you're not hung out to dry like in the old times. He also created labor laws that would protect the average worker from the for-profit corporations that really didn't care about the health and well-being of the worker, they just cared about their bottom line. And he dealt with a lot of the antitrust stuff of the big corporations getting even bigger and owning even more, which helped curb the income inequality and create the middle class. Now, many of FDR's policies were deemed socialist or anti-American, but as we can see, they created the thriving middle class of America that we now enjoy today, which right now is being threatened. How is that being threatened? Well, let's compare some things with back in 1929. In 2020, we see, again, a major stock market crash. We also see a major health crisis affecting everyone. And this major health crisis is exposing the for-profit health industry and showing us an even greater need to ensure health care for everyone. Much like in 1929, we also see major unemployment. The numbers from last week alone are over 3.25 million unemployment claims filed in just one week. We also see the government stepping in trying to avoid some of the pitfalls that happened back in the 1920s. Unfortunately, the stimulus checks are a tiny penance compared to the amount that they're giving to major corporations. That's those people at the top, which right now in 2020 are actually paralleling the income inequality of the 1920s. So whoever thought it was a good idea to just give more money to the corporations and the wealthy didn't really understand what happened back in the 1920s. And the current stimulus package of two point whatever trillion dollars also includes a clause for up to 4.5 trillion in additional benefits to the top 1% and corporations. And lastly, with the health crisis, we saw that the protections were mainly to protect the corporations. For example, one of the big clauses in that bill that passed was actually put out by the health insurance companies. And while it might sound good at first, yes, 
we shouldn't overcharge for healthcare related to the crisis, that was actually only for the insurance companies. So the insurance companies can't get price gouged, but you might. And there's no protection for people like us. And you might be saying, well, Marcus, I agree with the stimulus package because there's a lot of corporations that employ a lot of people. And while we've been hearing that in the media, that's not actually the case. Did you realize that the biggest employer in the United States is small businesses? That's right, little businesses like me here teaching you on the internet, and your hair salon, and your local insurance agent, your realtor, the auto parts store, and any other small business makes up over 47.5% of the total US workforce, which employs over 58.9 million people alone. Now contrast that with companies like Amazon who only employ 500,000 people worldwide. And for some reason, they're getting all the tax breaks and us small businesses that actually employ the majority of Americans are left to pick up the crumbs at the table of the wealthy. To answer the question of will this be worse or the same as the Great Depression, we need to look at a few key factors. First of all, the major unemployment is very temporary. There's lots of people unemployed because they simply can't go to work. Not because the work disappeared, they just can't go do it because we all need to keep our safe distance. Contrast that with the Great Depression, the actual demand was lost and the work disappeared overnight because people couldn't afford to keep their workers on for a long period of time. And again, during the Great Depression, you also had a huge drop in the demand for goods and services because people couldn't afford to buy anything. They were limited to basic necessities, if anything at all. One of the troublesome signs that I see about the current economy versus the Great Depression is that the wealth is concentrated at the top. Now, during the Great Depression, FDR did a great job of creating more demand by putting more people to work and putting the average worker first. But it's troubling to see that right now, the exact opposite is happening. We now have a situation where they're throwing trillions at the top corporations and pennies to the rest of us. This is what's known as an opposite wealth transfer, where FDR transferred the wealth back into the hands of the middle class and the lower class. The current admin is transferring it up to the top 1%. Yeah, the people who already have lots of money. And if we've learned anything from the 1980s, trickle-down economics does not work. If you were to take a look at this chart showing wealth and income inequality, you could see that since the 1980s when trickle-down economics became a thing, the wealthy got even more wealthy and the middle class and the lower class stayed the same and actually lost their economic footing. And one of the things we see happening right now is that there's many states and governments, local and federal, bidding on tons of medical supplies. These medical supplies will be purchased by the federal government from for-profit companies. And because of the bidding, we're seeing products that are 20,000 going for 45,000 and up. I guess price gouging's okay when it comes out of the middle class pocket. And again, this is going to lead to more income inequality. Now, a lot of people might be asking about inflation. Do we need to worry about inflation? Well, we need to understand a few key things when it comes to inflation. If the government was to go out and print a hundred trillion dollars, yeah, that's going to create inflation because that's going to be too many dollar bills chasing too few products and services which causes the price to go up, which causes inflation. Now in this instance, I don't think we need to worry about inflation just yet, but we should be concerned about where the national debt is going. Now, contrary to popular belief, the national debt isn't actually owed to countries outside the US. The majority is owned by the US to the federal government in the form of savings bonds and loans and other things of that nature. And remember, money is debt. With a fiat currency, you can't have money unless you have debt. However, if you are worried about the growing deficit, we need to take a look at where it's going. Right now, trillions of dollars in deficit spending is going in the form of tax breaks and government subsidies to the top 1%. So we are literally funding income inequality out of our own paychecks. 
And as we saw in the 1920s, income inequality leads to less money for the average American, which leads to a Great Depression. Now, luckily this time around, a lot of the things that FDR implemented back in the 1920s, 30s, and 40s are still around today. So there are protections against mortgages and bank deposits and antitrust and all these other things to keep the average American safe financially. But unfortunately, the tax code is very unfair to people in the middle class, the working people like you and I. And there's a lot of rollbacks happening on major corporations and a lot of the checks and balances that were put in place for major corporations corporations are now being rolled back. So based on the numbers, is this going to be as bad as the Great Depression? Probably not. Mostly because the unemployment is artificially lowered because of our current crisis. This should be a wake-up call to you to say, we don't want a government that only works for the top 1% anymore. We want a government that works for all of us. And two things that were very telltale in the current administration was when Jared Kushner, Donald Trump's son-in-law, called the government a company and the people its customers. And last I checked, the government officials work for us, not the other way around. And if you look at the face of the president in one of the last briefings, he was asked about whether his corporations would receive some of the bailout stimulus money. His face was actually quite telling. I'll put a link to that video in the description. Now, I think in these uncertain times, it's very important to look at the words of people who came before us. We have FDR who said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And that's very true when it comes to the economy. While we look at things like the health crisis that's going on that no one really could have predicted, we could go through and we can look at the economic impact of it, understanding that economics and money and our current system is man-made. That means that all the fear and all the flaws were something that we made up and we can change. FDR also said that men are not prisoners of fate, they're prisoners of their own mind. So what can you do during these times to guard your mind and also what can you do to learn something that'll improve your value in the marketplace even if things take a turn downward? The late Jim Rohn used to say that formal education will make you a living, but self-education will make you a fortune. And that's what we plan on doing in this channel is educating you so you can learn what you need to do to stay safe in these times and understand exactly what's going on economically so that you're not blindsided. And the best thing you can do is prepare yourself by understanding what's going on. Learn a new skill, learn a trade, learn something that you can use even if your job ends up being unstable, that you can go out there and make a living no matter what. On this channel, I like to teach you all about how to make money from home with blogging and affiliate marketing and video marketing and all kinds of things like that. And if you like this video, make sure you give us a thumbs up and subscribe and check out our other videos that'll help you get the self-education that could make you a fortune. Thanks again for watching. Give us a thumbs up, put your comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.